Hey, change agents. How are you? Welcome to another episode of Ty and Tracy. <laughs> well, we might as well call it that, right? <laughs> yeah, another episode of Ty and Tracy. And today, I feel like I am about to officiate, um, you know, a WWE match. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, let's get ready. I'm not gonna sit because I know it's trademark. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to, you know. <laughs> in this corner we have curriculums, and in this corner we have programs. <laughs> Who's gonna win? But, Who gets you the money? That's the question. Who gets you the money? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're talking about today. Who secures the bag, right? (laughs) And look, and depending on what you're doing, both of them are very much needed. But who gets the money? You know, that's the that's the thing. And I know like everybody wants the money, you know. Yes. Uh everybody. A lot of people who think they have programs only have curriculums. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people who think they have curriculums only have outlines. Right. <laughs> that's kind of that's why we're here. That's we're trying to you guys straighten yeah. out. Just kind of know the difference between the two and where you need them. Like, when is it important to make sure that you definitely have a curriculum, and when is it very very necessary that you lead with programs first? And how do you combine them? Yeah, because they, you know, that's they they work together depending on what your your model is what you're trying to do. Yep. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it. Yeah, let's so let's, let's start with curriculums. So what are curriculums? So you know, like when you go to school and your teacher has a, almost like a syllabus, like if you're in college and they have a set guidelines for what they're going to teach and how they're going to teach it. But the difference between a syllabus and a curriculum is a uh, curriculum is usually scripted. So it tells you step by step by step what you're going to do. So when the teacher takes her teacher's manual, literally anybody with half a knowledge of the subject matter can pick up the manual and teach the class because it tells you this is the first thing you say to the class. Then you wait for their response and then this is how you respond. This is the second thing you do and it breaks it down into time frames for you. So you should only spend five minutes on this. You should only spend 20 minutes on this. This is the assignment that they're going to need to turn in. This is how you're going to grade the assignment. It's literally a playbook Mm -hmm. on how to teach the subject matter with all of the benchmarks. um, If um. Um, outlined for you and how you should assess. Mm-hmm. And we all know you have to have assessment and evaluation in order to secure the bag. Mm-hmm. So that's I mean, even with you know rubrics, you know curriculums include these things and tell you exactly what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. What the, what this what should this be? You know what should these uh, what should the results look like if they're doing right. this? How do you score that and those kind of things? Uh, bringing mm-hmm. that together walking you through a process. I, I think curriculums were just kind of designed to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Yes. You know? That's um, exactly so. what it was for uniformity in teaching a subject matter area. Because even with curriculums, people tend to get off gear because they either don't know how to teach that or they don't like teaching it. So even though we have curriculums in the school system when I used to teach and I ran my department and we would sit down and we would create a syllabus to go along with the curriculum. So mm-hmm. at the midpoint mark, when we're ready to give the um, the assessment, the midterms, everybody should have completed X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. But we get to the midterm and there's a teacher who's still on stuff that was mm-hmm. supposed to be done in the when first you're in school, you'll, you'll hear like the administrator st- screaming, stick to the curriculum. Stick, you know, and, and, they're, and they're serious because there are certain benchmarks that you have to meet Yes. And if you don't, if you kind of go off the wall, you know, you go a wall on these on this curriculum. <laughs> then you got kids all over the place, and they're placing everywhere. And you're like, okay, what happened? You yes. know, if there's nothing underlying, no other reason why they're not learning, why they're not getting it, then you can almost point to the fact that somebody veered away from the curriculum. <laughs> we don't know. We, this teacher, that you did. One hundred percent guaranteed. Mm-hmm. That is one hundred percent guaranteed. If you have a class, a, a, a grade level, and everybody's supposed to be doing. Um, the same type of curriculum, and you have a set of students who are just not doing well in the teacher's classes because the teacher is not teaching to the curriculum. 
Mm -hmm. I'm positive. The teacher is not teaching to the curriculum. And mm -hmm. that is the problem. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. And the thing about programs, a lot of programs are formed to create curriculums. Yes. You know? um, and so when we when we say, you know, what are your programs, programs first, a lot of times when you see pilot programs or you see programs just kind of in action, the whole thing is centered around creating this one page that everybody could be on that's going to be generalized across your audience. And a lot of times that 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 resulting product is a curriculum, you know, what right. you're, you're going to use the curriculum that's already been created to carry you through the process of the program to meet a, a certain goal or to um, fulfill a certain level of impact that you're trying to fulfill. Right. So they kind of work together. But the program, the programs get the money. So the yeah, program. that's what I was just about to say. So yes. <laughs> Like Ty said, the curriculums are embedded into the programs, but the program is what gets the money, not the curriculum. So it, to me, I like to say that the curriculum is the byproduct of the program. And what is the program? The program is the solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. That's what the program is, the solution to a problem. So the, um, the curriculum is used to help solve that problem, but the program is what is going to figure out if the curriculum is working, mm -hmm. right? And if it's creating the impact, if it's supporting your mission, not mm -hmm. the curriculum itself, but the program which the um, curriculum is embedded into. Right, the, the curriculum is a tool. So, mm -hmm. you'll see, so you'll see during your program that you'll have several tools. You have intake processes, you have these evaluation measures. The curriculum is one of those. It's a tool that you use to determine whether or not what you are implementing is actually working. Mm -hmm. It also helps you that your, your benchmarks, it helps with that. So it goes a long way into determining, you know, steps of your evaluation, process evaluation. Um, we're supposed to be doing this by this point, by that point. So right. in essence, that curriculum serves as that component in your program that's going to help you to figure out whether or not you're doing what it is you say you're supposed to be doing. Right. And then I can bring it back to the analogy because most people, everybody I think here has been to school, right? Or you have kids in school. So the way how a teacher assesses that the curriculum is actually working or that they have met the benchmarks of the curriculum is through some type of a project, a cumulative project, a quiz, or a test. And that is how you make sure that what you say you were going to teach, the benchmarks that you said, of the objectives, that's what we call it, goals and objectives, right? So the goals and objectives that you set forth in your um, in your lesson plan was actually taught. Because one thing I had learned from my grandmother when I started teaching is that nothing is taught until it's learned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Grandma. And yeah. That yeah. kind of changed my whole teaching career. Right. Mm -hmm. Nothing is taught until it's learned. So you could get up there and you could be right. But if the people who you're talking to, they don't get the concept mm -hmm. and they're not able to apply what they have heard from you. So that's mm -hmm. the learning process. Mm -hmm. Then you didn't teach anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because sometimes you go into it and you want to be this tough teacher, you know, and you want to, you know, drive things home. But if everybody in your class is failing, you're not a good teacher. Like, you're a bad teacher because no. <laughs> you didn't teach. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You just taught that. Them all day. Mm -hmm. they know and I think you. that same thing can pass over to um, nonprofit organizations. So it's like the, that bad teacher syndrome. So you're up there and you have all your lesson plans put together and you're talking, 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 you're well-dressed. You know, everything is looks good on the outside, mm -hmm. but um, nobody's learning anything, mm -hmm. right? So in the nonprofit organization, people do the same thing. You're mm -hmm. out here doing grab bags, food share, whatever, all these different activities, but nothing is truly mm -hmm. coming up about coming out of it so and even right now when i talked and i talked and i talked uh, i i felt like i was teaching mm -hmm. and only one person one single person out of a class of 30 got it did i really create an impact yes i know we say that we create an impact with one person at a time 
but not when you have a whole group of 30 people sitting in front of you for nine months, 10 months. Mm -hmm. Come on now. <laughs> you know, so yeah. And definitely. nothing changes. And the, the purpose of programs, you know, you were saying when we started that programs are the solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. The purpose of programs is to produce an impact. That's the whole mm -hmm. reason that they are here. So you're supposed to make a difference. You're supposed to change somebody's behavior. You're supposed to change their attitude. You're supposed to change their circumstances or their situations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're just doing stuff, you know, with the grab bags and the book book bags and the mm -hmm. seminars and the webinars or whatever it is and the workshops that y'all are doing. Nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know that what if even if you have a curriculum or you think you have a program that's how you know that it's not working because you've cut the right. same people who came to your services last year Still and spent all your resources now. last year. You gave them all the food baskets last year. You gave them all the backpacks last year. Mm -hmm. And then this year, they're back again. Three years ago, three years from now, the same three people are, are back again. And you, So what, what are you doing? Is that the thing that you're doing? Is it making a difference? Are you teaching them anything? Are they just going to be forever dependent on your services? And this is what I think a lot of funders um, are concerned with because they're they're not in this game to just give you money for the rest of your life, you know, for the life cycle. The nonprofit too or, should not be in the game of just right. giving the services away to the same people continuously. Yeah, I think what we get into is enabling a lot, and I, and, and that's not the goal of programs. Programs are to create a difference and to, to make a positive change, to make a positive impact. So if you're, and I understand your services may be to provide backpacks and this is what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. But if every year this same mom comes for the last six years through, you know, her kids started out in kindergarten and now she got, now he's in 12th grade and you're still having to give her a backpack in your summer drive because she does not know how to get a backpack for her kid, then there's a problem with your program. There's a right. problem with well, okay. your program. But let's piggyback on what you just said. If the same mom is coming every year for a backpack or school supplies for their child, right? How do you even know that it's the same person mm -hmm. that's coming every year? You mm -hmm. may recognize the person, mm -hmm. but do you really have a system in place? This is part mm -hmm. of the programs. Mm -hmm. Do you have a system in place to track the yeah. people who are coming every single year or who are coming sporadically maybe they only came once maybe they came twice mm -hmm. maybe they like ty said this is year number five mm -hmm. by year number two you should have an intervention in place if you see someone coming for a particular service if it's food if it's supplies that type of stuff you have to have an intervention in place because we talked about this in some of our other um sessions when we talked about collaborations, having collaborative partners within the community. And sometimes you even have to have sub programs to support your main program because you see that there's a deficit that you did not foresee going into creating your program. So if year number five is coming and this same person is coming back for school supplies, backpacks for their child, then there's a deeper issue. Maybe this person does not have a, a, a high school diploma and maybe you need to refer them to a GED program so they can get the education to even get a job, probably like at McDonald's or Walmart. You know, maybe it's, um, they have a child at home that has special needs and they're not able to go out to work. Maybe you need to have them, someone from the Department of Human Services um, come out and assist them with getting a caregiver or getting that child into a program. You need to find out what is going on. No one should need the same services year after year and after year. Part of having programs is about evaluation. And we talked about long-term sustainability. And even if they're not coming back, why aren't they coming back? That too. Yes. Is the program teach them something to make them a better person? Are you capturing that information? What happened? So you can use that for your, your next funding opportunities, right? right? And all Did that they, comes in the follow-up. Right? Did they die? Did, I mean, what what happened? What, what's going on? Like, what is, what is it? So you have That's to be a serious able to question work. because I've worked with nonprofit organizations who kept sending people stuff or had people on their their um their list of people that they were providing services for didn't even know people died like two three years ago mm -hmm. because there was no true follow up they just kind of stayed on the list mm -hmm. as a number you know so the follow up have someone whether it's your administrative assistant which I would not suggest you need a program director who's mm -hmm. actually going to take the time and follow up with 
all of the clients who have come through your program so that when you go to write you go to look for grants and this always because everybody wants a grant right so when you go to look for grants this information becomes pertinent mm -hmm. These may be some of the questions you just don't know. We can't say these are the set questions that a grantor is going to ask you because every grantor has their own specified questions that they want answers to based on their mission and their what they, the um, statistics that they want to collect as well. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know, but you need to have a holistic program that you're collecting the right type of data. And when you need it, you can just pull from it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's kind of in a nutshell. And, the, and I mean, because of the programs and because you get this specific information, you know, this evaluation is so big in programs. That's why programs get you the money because mm -hmm. the funders see dollars. Dollars come from evaluation. It comes from statistics. In everything that's a number, that's what the funder is looking at. Like, what are these numbers? <laughs> We're looking at money. You're looking at evaluation. You're looking at impact um, statements and things like that is what the funder is wanting to see. And when you're when you're kind of so stuck on curriculum and the A, B, C through Z of it, you forget about the fact that you're supposed to be producing this, this impact in the end. I mean, I think that the curriculum takes you so far. Because but most people are not even curriculum writers. Right. And, then, and again, and what, what they're, a lot of people are writing is they think it's curriculum, they're writing outlines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're writing, they're writing outlines or mm -hmm. overviews, and mm -hmm. they are assuming that this is a curriculum, but it is mm -hmm. not. There's several pieces to the curriculum that also incorporates measurement. Um, like I said, in, a, a curriculum is a tool. So, and if you're just having an outline, that's a guide, not the same thing as mm -hmm. a tool, because a tool is actually something that you could use. A guide is something that you can look at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, so if we had to say curriculum versus programs again, who wins? <laughs> now we're kind of like this. Like, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, but every day programs went out. All day, every day. If you're looking for money for your organization, programs are what you need to develop. And that's why we developed this system again. Building profitable programs, like legit that's what it is. You're building programs that are going to get you fully funded. Everybody. Funded or free. Can we go yeah. there? Right? Because we know what we know, right? <laughs> and if you, if you take what we teach you and you implement it accordingly, then you'll get the funding. You know, basically that's, that's it. And guaranteed. I, and I'm that's guaranteed. Guaranteed. guaranteed, right? <laughs> People try to skip, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. That's, Tracy give me all this work and stuff. This is work. The funding fairy is dead. I said all the time. She died in 1983 of natural causes. <laughs> she ain't coming back. There was she had a do not resuscitate order. So um, she's gone. So yeah. now you gotta do the work. You gotta, yeah, you, you gotta do the work. It's a lot of work, but once you implement the strategies that we're gonna teach you in the class and so last time we were here, we said by the time we came back, we probably have another bonus and a longer program, right? And so we do. <laughs> we get a new. We need to stop doing these because we're the bonus. No, 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 we're not adding anything else to it. But we keep seeing different components. Like when we talk to our clients, and we're like, okay, we just have to put this in. So now there's going to be not just a program for funding, but a whole funding section of this. So we're helping you with your infrastructure we're helping you to build a program we're helping you to do all of your assessments this is now gone from a six-month program to a year-long program because you need a year i mean yes really you can't see lasting change under a year and mm -hmm. we're helping you step by step through the program. you have almost almost untethered access to ty and i to help and you being right there funded That's exactly <laughs> Yeah, I promise y'all. Okay. And then when we're done, because we believe in programs. So this is why we did this for a year, because we're not just going to give you the information and say, bye, it was nice seeing you. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like I just said, nothing is learned until it's taught. So how many times have you taken an online course and you're going, okay, that was some good information, but now what? Now what? what? I do with it? You know, 
<laughs> right. So it's the implement. You can have knowledge. You can read a book all day, every day. You can watch a program. You could absorb information. But having information and not being able to implement the information is completely different. Implementation is where the learning process. When you know someone has truly learned is when they're able to do step by step what you taught them to do. Most mm -hmm. people don't learn that way. They actually need the information and then they need the handholding mm -hmm. through the process to make sure that they're doing it right. And that's what we're going to be providing for you. And a lot like you were saying, because I have a lot of people like this, Todd, just hold my hand. Just hold, just hold my hand. Just hold my hand. <laughs> and sometimes you just, really, especially when you're going into you know territory that you're really unfamiliar with or you're not comfortable with, programs are, that's a huge thing. It is. If you want to see a successful organization, look at their programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at them. If mm -hmm. you're right here struggling, if you're on ground zero or level one, and you're like, man, I wish my organization could be like this. I wish my organization could be like a Salvation Army. I wish my organization could you be like You know something? Like Maybe we should do a case study. Yeah. Yeah, so that they can truly understand yeah. the power of the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should, yeah. So now we just added that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's the best way to have a model of what it is that you are going for. So you can you know what this looks like. You can on the outside looking in, it just looks pretty. It looks like a pretty picture. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. this is beautiful. Oh, they have this. And they're you know, they have several million dollars in their organization. On the inside of that organization are effective programs. Yes. Yeah. And this is this is what separates you from them. Mm -hmm. Because they have they have the infrastructure, they know what they're looking for, they know what impact they're trying to make, they know how to make it. They they have the map, they have the blueprint that Tracy's talking about that we're gonna give you guys in the mastery, and they follow it. Yes. So you can have it. I mean, I've I've seen people that have business plans, you know, in five binders <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and did not have any money. Yeah, have strategic plans, you know, this big and did not have any money. Mm -hmm. because they were not implementing yeah so it's all about implementation for the year this is y'all gonna be mad right and this is because, this is another reason why for accountability because you have to do the work if you don't do the work it's not going we can give you information all day mm -hmm. get you all night we can be in here and we can you know whatever but if you're not gonna put your foot to it ain't no gas we're not gonna go anywhere <laughs> yeah, we could come on here twice a week and actually teach the program that doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a mastery. It takes skill. It takes time. It takes patience. And I know everybody likes to say, Google it. Yeah, Google, Google, Google it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Google it. There's a lot of information out there. Mm -hmm. But the difference between Google and a consultant or a teacher is that that person has acquired all that information already. And they have de developed their own system of breaking it down and disseminating it to you or feeding it to you so mm -hmm. that you can actually digest it mm -hmm. and absorb it, okay? Because if you eat food and your digestive system is wacky, you're not gonna be absorbing any of the nutrients. Therefore, you shouldn't even bother eating because you're just wasting your time, mm -hmm. right? And you know that some people suffer from malabsorption. So it's the same process. I mean, I'm, I can use analogies all day to try to explain to you that, yes, you can Google anything. Their Google is a treasure trove of information. But because you read it on Google, you see it on Google, or you go to YouTube University, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do it. You need that step by You need a human person holding your hand, saying, looking over your stuff, going, no, that's, this is not where you, you should be going. You need to go in this direction. You need to put this in here. You need to take that out. Maybe that needs to be something separate, blah, 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 blah. That is what we're doing for you. Mm -hmm. And you can't get it any better than that. That's kind of, that's it. You know, have it for the investment. And we have a guarantee. You're talking about something that your program director would be doing, you know? Um, so for the investment, you, you're really, really winning on this mm -hmm. one. Um, even if you have a program director, a lot of you guys are, you know, getting people in who may not be who you're putting in program director positions, um, but may not be program director material, material or may not have the knowledge as of yet, because everybody has to start somewhere and learn somewhere. Right. You know, this is their opportunity. Mm -hmm. We are the best teachers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, and I do see we're acting teachers before. Like you're like a teacher teacher, right? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I do believe that each organization, any organization that truly believes in growth and wants to see growth, because if you keep asking the question, how is this organization a million dollar organization? Because they got some programs, mm -hmm. some very effective programs, some very effective devel um, program development systems and the fund development systems that they're utilizing to get to the money. And mm -hmm. that is what's going on. And that's what we're going to teach you in this program is how to get to the money through the development of programs. So, yes, we're very good at teaching. We do a good job. <laughs> we really do. Honestly, we do. So if you are interested in making that investment in developing your programs, like I said, building profitable programs, that's why we called it that. We're building profitable programs because um, like I like to say all the time, the non-profit does not mean no profit. Nonprofits have to make money. They must make money. And legitimately, they have to make more money than a for-profit business because you have a completely different business model. More to take care of. Let's go. Yeah. You have way more to take care of than I do as a business because not everyone in your business is going to be able to pay for the services that you provide. So you have to account for their services. You have to have the people still have to be paid. People providing the services still have to be paid. So if I need $50,000 to run my program and my for-profit business that I'm teaching, you're probably going to need $150,000 to run the same program. It's just what it is. Mm -hmm. So um, we are here to help. Um, I think you've seen us enough. <laughs> you, listen. We, we have been vetted. We have been tried and true. So you yeah. shouldn't have any question about our qualifications to get you through from probably zero. Some of you are going to come in with a zero balance to making over six figures. That is what we're guaranteeing. We're going, guaranteeing you that we are going to actually have an injection of cash flow in your organization by the end of the year, as long as you follow the system. Follow the system. Invest. This is follow an investment, system, ladies and gentlemen. Follow the system. <laughs> follow <laughs> the system. Okay. Yeah, shortcuts. <laughs> shortcuts. Okay. So the this, the link to sign up for the class is in the description. Please go ahead and sign up today. Start. Figure out how you're going to pay for it. Um, it's not cheap. We. are we can't give it to you any lower than we're giving it to you or so it wouldn't even be worth our time but it's going we're investing a lot of time up front to get the program put together and it's going to be a lot of time for the next year so we're going to get to know each other really 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 well and we have a limited amount of people that we can actually get into this program because of the intensity of it so the quick the earlier you sign up the better off you're going to be mm -hmm. anything else you want to say Ty? That intensity this is serious think about your organization right now think about the state of your programs right now if you are struggling with your programs you need to go to this link and get it together seriously mm -hmm. because it's time it's just really time to do this you got there's a lot of stuff going on in the world there's a lot of trends and you know where funding is going a lot of these nonprofit organizations are going to be left behind and left behind quickly if you yes. don't get on the bus and follow the trend. <laughs> you're gonna be, you're gonna be left behind. You're struggling already. Uh -huh. You know, if you're struggling already. You know, that there's something missing. That something is the programs. I am not even knowing you, not even seeing what you got. Yeah. I know that if you are struggling right now in your organizations, it's because your programs are not together. Uh -huh. That's programs in your infrastructure. Your infrastructure, and, and it kind of you know it builds upon each other. I mean, you, yeah. we're even you know because we know that it builds upon each everything builds upon the other thing. Mm -hmm. This mastery that we have helps you to get the infrastructure together as well. So this is why we're here for a year because we just can't throw a program at you, yeah. right? So here's your program without knowing what you know what kind of foundation we're working with. And see, we did the exact same thing that we're telling you about. So that's exactly what we came out with first. Mm -hmm. We were just coming to teach you program development, how to develop a profitable program. And mm -hmm. as we kept talking to people and we kept talking about it amongst ourselves and looking at, you know, what we have had, the problems we've had with clients throughout the years and what we're seeing, 
and different groups that we're in, we're like, okay, we got to add this. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, this is going on now. So we need to add this piece. Um, oh, that's going on. So we need to add this piece. And then it just kind of developed from there into a bigger and more holistic program mm -hmm. um, development model that is really going to get you where you need to go. Yep. Yep. Well, join yeah. us. So we'll see y'all in the program, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. So again, um, like and share this with someone that you know who needs it. Um, uh, put replay, hashtag replay in the comment section so we know that you were here and go ahead and sign up for the program today. Figure it out. Figure it, Figure it out. out. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone.